Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower, and today we are here to have a chat about all of the big announcements coming out of Star Wars Celebration and me giving you guys my thoughts and all that. But first up, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. If we do that, we will do a watch party live stream of an entire Star Wars trilogy. If you guys also can head over to my other YouTube channel called Top 10 Character Moments. I am so close to my first subscriber goal there over there on that channel and that subscriber goal is 150 subscribers we are so close to it you guys so if you guys could subscribe to both my channels it'd be great it's free and it really helps support me as a content creator thank you guys so a lot of big news coming out of Star Wars Celebration. Now, a lot of it we didn't get to see because once again, Disney Lucasfilm has decided to hide everything behind their paywalls instead of letting us, the fans, actually get to see this stuff. I guess this is just the new way they're doing it now. And I really hate it. But let's start getting into some of these announcements, you guys. So first up, I have written down in my notes, Andor Season 2, coming in summer 2024. Splendid. For those of you guys that have been watching my channel, you guys know how much I love the Andor show, how I talk such great things about that show, and how much I love the characters, and... The story, nah man, I don't like the show. I've said it before, and like, I was so negative about the show that I'm like, all right guys, by the end of this, I'm like, I wanna just stop, I wanna stop talking about the show, I wanna be done, I wanna move on. But now we have season two coming up, which means I have to start talking about it again. I'm really hoping with the time jumps that it's somewhat different, but I also have a gut feeling it is gonna kinda just be just the same, especially because it's got all the same people and all the same directors and all this other stuff. So yeah, not really looking forward to that, but let's move on. Skeleton Crew, 2023. I, that's all I've got written down in my notes for Skeleton Crew. Did they give a release date for Skeleton Crew? I'm pretty sure it's gotta be after Ahsoka, right? Cause Ahsoka's coming in August. There's another big announcement, but I think Skeleton Crew, that's gotta be like, I don't know, maybe the end of 2023. I am still curious about this show. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but I am curious about it. I'll give you that much. We've got The Acolyte coming in 2024. I think it should be a pretty good show, but I guess we'll just have to see. There is gonna be a Wookiee Jedi in The Acolyte, and I think it's gonna be played by the same person who plays Chewbacca in the new trilogy. That's pretty cool. Is it Chewie's father, perhaps? Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say on Acolyte right now, so let's move on. We've got three new Star Wars films coming. According to Kathleen Kennedy, according to that panel, that Lucasfilm showcase panel, we've got three Star Wars movies coming, and we're going to talk about it. The first one is a Dave Filoni-directed film, which already had me very excited. And then what made me more excited is the fact that it's taking place during the Mandoverse timeline, which means I have a gut feeling. I don't know if this was confirmed or anything, but I got a gut feeling this is going to be the culmination of the Mandoverse timeline. So this is, I know there were reports like a while back that I felt like just kind of went along the wayside, but I feel like just as someone who's a fan of all the shows and someone who just kind of likes to speculate a lot, I think this is what's going to happen, right? There was going to be that big crossover event that was supposed to have like the Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, Rangers of the New Republic at the time, and Ahsoka. I think you can pretty much just scratch out Rangers of the New Republic and insert Skeleton Crew, and I think that you're going to have a big crossover with all four of those shows. And whatever the ending to, like, this big Mandalorian story is, I think that's what this movie is going to be. And if it is, I'm very excited for it. The other thing I have to say about this, you guys, is that if Ahsoka does well, which I think it will, and then this Star Wars movie that Dave Filoni is directing... If it does well, both in terms of it's popular amongst the fan base, that, you know, the fans love it, and it does well financially, that Dave Filoni needs to be given the keys to the freaking kingdom now. Let him do more. Don't let him do more. Let him do everything. And again, I don't care if we have to level back on content. I don't care. I just want it to be good. I want quality over quantity. I've been saying this for feels like forever now. But moving on to our second film that we are going to be getting. It is a film 
about the first Jedi. They talk, they talked about this timeline and like all these different points and like, you know, they have the old Republic on there, which by the way, can we please start covering that era soon? Little bit of speculation on my part though, real quick about the old Republic. I was talking with my friend about this the other day. I think that if this decade, like the 2020 decade, is going to be centered on the Mandoverse, I think that the 2030 decade could be about the Old Republic. You start centering more content around that. Because everything right now feels like a lot of it is centered on the Mandoverse stuff. I think that if you start establishing Old Republic stuff in the next decade, like I would be all for that. But going back to this film about the first Jedi, I think like they call this era what? Like Dawn of the Jedi or something like that? That's a really cool title for, a, for an era. But I'm very excited to see what they come up with, you guys. Just sort of like, I want to say it's almost like what? Like the start of the Star Wars Bible, right? In the beginning, there was this. And that's what I'm very excited to look at and see what they come up with. And then there's something that... I feel like at first I was kind of surprised, but then like when thinking about it, I guess I'm not surprised. And that is that Daisy Ridley is coming back as Rey and the, for a movie that takes place 15 years after the rise of Skywalker in an era called the New Jedi Order. And I guess that's what this whole thing is going to establish, right? Is uh, Rey leading the new Jedi Order. I mean, you know, personally, I think it'd be kind of cool if we would have had, like, Luke in there and Ahsoka and, you know, uh, Ezra Bridger and Kel Kestis and all those other guys. But no, we'll, we'll just do with Rey. That's fine. Whatever. So, first of all, I am very happy for Daisy Ridley. I'm glad that she's able to come back and, and reprise her role as Rey. I will say that at first, um, I was kind of down on this, but then I thought about it and I'm like, well, really the only thing that I would have been down on is if it would have been a trilogy. Like, if they would announced like, hey, we're doing a trilogy and like, it's just going to be centered on Rey. I would have like, you know, just rolled my eyes and been like, oh, come on. And, you know, but the fact that it's like one movie, it does make me like a little bit more like, okay, it's one movie. Let's just see what they do with it. Who knows? Like, you know, it, it, it'll probably be good. And it's not that I don't like Rey either. Like, I do like Rey, but I just, there were problems that I had with her character throughout the, the sequel trilogy, none of which I feel like was Daisy Ridley's fault. And I feel like just the writing of the entire trilogy was inconsistent. I love Force Awakens. And I even love Rise of Skywalker too. I really do. But like Last Jedi had the whole thing just like discombobulated. And it just like, there's so many things throughout all three movies that like just as a trilogy, it doesn't make sense. As like certain films as like standalone movies, Movies, they are good, but like as a, a the trilogy as a whole, it feels like not much thought was put into it. And we've talked about this before on my channel. There was no plan. We've mentioned this before in other videos. Daisy Ridley herself admitted this on that Josh Gad interview. Now, here's the other thing, you guys. Like, we, we've got these announcements for all three Star Wars movies, right? And I am very excited for all these movies. But I feel like until they, like, announce that these movies are in production and we start getting trailers for them and we start feeling the hype, like, I'm not going to be as excited. And I say this because we've seen this song and dance played out before. The Ryan Johnson trilogy, the Patty Jenkins movie, the Kevin Feige movie, Taka Watiti movie, all these movies that they announce ahead of time and they're like, ooh, get excited. You know, we start seeing these reports about these movies that are going to be a thing and then nothing happens. So who's to say that... You know, by the end of 2025, just for example, let's say that they don't have movies out by that time, which I think the, the Ray movie will probably be the first one. But who's to say that those movies don't get scrapped? Or let's say that, you know, 2025 rolls around, Kathleen Kennedy gets fired, and then whoever comes in next scratches all the movies start something anew. So until these movies are in production, trust me, these concepts are great ideas. Even the Ray one, I am interested. I'm telling you right now, I'm really, really pumped for what Dave Filoni can do in the filmmaking industry. But I've been here before. And I warn you all right now, we could be sitting here in like a year's time having the same, ugh, they got canceled. Again, discussion, you know? So I will tell people, just... Don't get too excited. <laughs> but you know what we can get excited about? The fact that Lars Mikkelsen is back as Grand Admiral Thrawn. Let's 
freaking go. I posted about this on my community tab the other day. I am so pumped that my guy is back as Thrawn for the Ahsoka series. And I got a feeling he's going to be the main villain for the Dave Filoni movie too. Dave Filoni announced at the Clone Wars 15th anniversary panel, which was a very cool panel, by the way. One of the panels that we actually got to see because, of course, they didn't have any new trailers or content or things that they were going to talk about, right? So, of course, we could see that. But, um, yeah, the, the big thing that he dropped at the end of that panel was like, oh, yeah, I've, uh, I've been writing more stuff for another season of Tales of the Jedi. And I'm like, oh, what? Okay. So hell yeah, I'm excited for t more Tales of the Jedi content, you know what I'm saying? I am so freaking pumped for that. I love the first season. More Clone Wars style content? Yes, please. Star Wars Visions Season 2 coming out May 4th. Definitely excited for that. I think we're going to be doing what we did with the first season and just doing a new ep a new discussion video every single week. Because I know they release like all the episodes on the same day, but we're going to treat it like it was any other Star Wars show that brings out one episode a week. So we're going to do one discussion video a week when it comes to the Star Wars Visions episodes. I'm very excited for that show. I didn't like all the episodes in the first season, but there were some really good episodes, I tell you that much. Freaking The Village Bride, The Ninth Jedi. And I've saved, I think, for me, what is probably the most shocking news coming out of Star Wars Celebration, and it's centered on the Bad Batch. They did the Bad Batch panel, and I think it was like at the very end of the panel that they dropped that not only was Season 3 coming, but Season 3 was going to be the final season of the Bad Batch. And I sat there just like, what? Seriously, you guys, like this is the thing that just has me shaking my head the most. Like... I think the reason for that is just because I felt that this show had so much potential to tell so many different stories through the eyes of the Bad Batch. This was a show that I expected to go like four or five seasons. It could have gone even longer than, than that. It could have even gone longer than The Clone Wars because the time between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope is a lot longer than the time between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So I feel like with all the years you had, there was so many potential to so much potential to tell so many different stories, but they've decided that season three is going to be the end of it. Now, maybe it's because they're going to tell more stories throughout this time and it's going to be centered on other characters. Maybe they just feel like whatever we're doing right now is like we can make this the most meaningful it can be by ending it by the end of this season. I don't know. I am curious if this was always the plan or if there was plans to do more. I don't know. I guess here's the thing, right? Like, I would much rather have a show that has a starting and an ending without it getting canceled somewhere in between. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we, we've seen that song and dance before with the Clone Wars. But I am very curious to see what's going to happen in season three. Does it change any of my thoughts by the end of season two? And we're going to talk more about Bad Batch in later weeks, you guys, because I have some videos planned. And, you know, at the time when those final episodes came out, like I was going on vacation. So it was like that morning, like before I went on my flight is when I recorded that video. And then later on, I would start editing it. And I was on vacation for a little while. And it was just like, all right, I haven't had any time to to make any Bad Batch content, especially because like with Celebration coming out as well, it was like that kind of took over the parts of my channel that I wanted to talk about, but I don't want to leave Bad Batch out. So I'm going to be making some Bad Batch videos uh, coming up in the next couple weeks because I very much love that show. But I want to know, like, what is it that they're doing here? Like, is, is Tech actually dead? Because maybe he is now, but I still don't believe it. Here's what needs to happen by the end of Bad Batch season three. This is what I'm hoping happens. All the members of Bad Batch are reunited. And I'm talking all of them. Even Tech. Even Crosshair. All of them. And then also, we had one episode with Cody in season two. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, where on earth is the follow-up with Cody? So Cody and Rex sure need to reunite. That is the second other thing that needs to happen. And I guess thirdly, Hemlock needs to die. The season's supposed to come out in 2024, right? So that's how long we gotta wait. So yeah, you guys, that's really all of the big news coming out of Star Wars Celebration. You guys gotta let me know in the comments below what you guys think about all this. What are you looking forward to most? What are you not looking forward to? Y'all gotta let me know all your thoughts 
and opinions in the comments below. Just remember to be respectful. We don't have to be at each other's throats for liking different things, all right? Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel. And remember to head over to Top 10 Character Moments and subscribe there as well. I will see you guys next time.